Hey folks, Joe here, resume review time. We have an individual who is looking for a job. Uh, they have him having too much luck. Um, they are a QA automation engineer with five years experience. Um, seem like mainly they are into um, Selenium testing, um, but they do have a lot of technologies here. So I'm just gonna give it a little glance then I'm going to go back and start at the top. Um, okay, so first thing, uh, name, QA Automation Engineer. Um, the colors are a little, they're a little bit strange. Like, it's not white background. It's almost like an olive color. And the name is almost like a brownish. And same thing with the experience here and uh, these HR, these horizontal rules and these uh, vertical lines here. Um, looks like it's brownish. So that's interesting just right off the bat. I don't know if it's good or bad necessarily, but um, it's not something that you, you see very common, right? Um, and then <clears throat> the next thing I notice here is just like the, um, the spacing of everything is kind of off. So like phone number like is not centered on name and QA automation engineer. And this location thing is kind of over here in the middle where it should be, I would expect it to be more in this region over here. Um, so I don't know. I don't know why. It could be the template that they're using or whatever program that they're using to generate this is what's causing the issue. Um, but it's definitely something that obviously would need to get addressed before you started sending this to any employers because, um, you know, let's be honest, like that doesn't look very professional, right? Um, all right, so let's read it. Dedicated and self-motivated quality assurance engineer with five years of comprehensive experience in UI, API, database, and mobile testing. Proficient in Selenium WebDriver and adept at implementing automation frameworks. Quick learner with strong analytical problem-solving skills and keen attention to detail. Proven ability to meet strict deadlines and contribute domain knowledge in ERP and cloud storage industries. Um, this is pretty good, actually. Uh, I like it. This length is pretty good. Um, one thing is, uh, I don't know if you meant to say analytical and problem-solving skills, or you're, or you're trying to say that you have your problem-solving skills themselves are very analytical. I wasn't sure, because I can read that either way. Um, so I would need a little clarity on that to see like what, how you would want to you know, clean that up, if, if at all. Um, Proven ability to meet strict deadlines and contribute domain knowledge in ERP and cloud storage industries. Um, I don't know if necessarily you're limit, you don't want to limit yourself to two industries. I think what you mean to say is ERP and cloud storage technologies, maybe. Um, or maybe you worked in an ERP company and then a cloud storage company, and, that, and I'm totally wrong. It's possible. Um, but it sounds like to me you're talking about ERP systems and cloud storage, you know, solutions. Maybe, I guess we'll find out more when we we read on. Maybe let's see. Okay, um, two jobs here. QA automation engineer is the title for both um, responsibilities. Okay, let's start with company one. Conducted manual and automated testing for web-based applications led the successful implementation of a data-driven framework and page factory model for Selenium WebDriver, resulting in increased test efficiency and maintainability. Created Selenium Automation hybrid framework on IntelliJ with Java, Selenium WebDriver, JUnit, Cucumber, Maven, Git, and Jenkins. Okay. Um, let me just stop there for a second. I feel like this first bullet point conducted manual and automated testing for web-based applications. Um, I feel like it's not that strong as it is. Like it, uh, yes, it tells exactly what you did. You tested manual and automated testing and you're saying that right off the beginning. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's what you want to do or if you want to make this stronger somehow. Um, like web-based applications. That What did those web-based applications do, right? 
um, web-based applications, that can mean anything. Give me more detail about the kinds of applications. Is it ERP or cloud storage application? Um, tell me that here. Let's read some more. Maybe we'll figure it out. Um, this one's pretty good. Let successful implementation of a data-driven framework. How many people used your framework might be an interesting um, fact to include here, right? Were you the only, like you made a framework just for yourself or, or was there a team um, that you were leading to do this? Um, how many people were using it? Stuff like that, you know, tell us. Created Selenium Automation Hybrid Framework on IntelliJ with Java, Selenium, WebDriver, JUnit, Cucumber, Maven, Git, and Jenkins. So you created a data-driven framework and then you cr created a hybrid framework. Um, and both of them were Selenium. And here you said Selenium twice. So you said Selenium Automation Hybrid Framework with IntelliJ and then you said Selenium again here. So I would maybe get rid of the first one, but I'm, I'm also confused at this point. Like why, why do you have two automation frameworks? What's going on? I'm sure there's a reason why, but you haven't explained to me why yet. So it's a little bit confusing. Played a key role in implementing cross browser and parallel testing strategies using Selenium Grid, reducing test execution time by 33% and enhancing testing coverage across different browsers. Which ones? Tell me. Pioneered adoption of Appium for mobile testing, resulting in streamlined iOS and Android test frameworks, improved mobile application quality, and enhanced user experience. So I don't know if you can say that you improve mobile application quality. The only way to improve quality is if you program quality. <laughs> I mean, like as a QA, right, you, you, you can observe and you can report issues. But ultimately, it's the developers who are writing the code who are going to determine whether or not what they do is quality, right? We're, we're there to inspect and to investigate, right? Um, so I don't know if I would say that I did this or enhanced user experience. That's the user experience designer, right? The U UI UX person probably, or the designer. So this, I would say, you might want to reword it. Um, and then here, yeah. Yeah, so now you have a third test framework here. Now you're talking about iOS and Android test frameworks. So there's a lot going on here. And I still don't know what, what your applications do. So at this point, um, I, if I was a hiring manager, I don't know. Like, would I continue even reading it? I don't know. Automated database verification using JDBC driver and Maven. Database verification. Okay, so tell me more about the database verification. Um, what did you do? Did you compare tables to a data file? Did you like have to seed the data database first? Or, you know, this is a little bit short. I would add a little bit more detail. Collaborated closely with development teams to review user stories and requirements, ensuring comprehensive test coverage in alignment with business needs. Yeah, this one's good. Utilize JMeter to conduct comprehensive performance testing, identifying and addressing bottlenecks and optimizing application performance. That's also very good. Um, yeah, that's a good one too. Conducted thorough exploratory testing to uncover potential defects and areas for improvement in the application. Cool. So having read all this, I don't think you need this one anymore because you covered automation. You covered three different automation frameworks, a performance testing framework, and exploratory testing. So you don't need, to, you don't need this, I don't think. Um, might want to think about the order. Typically, you want to put your biggest impact, your strongest written stuff at the top, and then kind of go uh, least important, you know, less and less important from there. So um, that kind of, you know, all this stuff is very technical and very good that you were able to do it, but like you might want to think about the order. That's all I'm saying. All right, and then proficient in tools, Java, Selenium, WebDriver, Cucumber, Maven, JUnit, Git, GitHub, Jenkins, 
JDBC, rest assured, Appium, Oracle, SQL, Developer, JavaScript, Jira, JMeter, Postman, HTML. Yeah, I didn't see anything about Postman, but you did mention that you did API testing. Um, and uh, I guess, you know, with JMeter, you must have done so you hit the APIs I guess or you yeah I don't know I don't know how you did your performance testing I'd be curious to learn more about that for sure <coughs> excuse me um, and then the other thing I noticed is like you have the same section down below after the other job and a lot of it's the same so I'm wondering if like we just combine them into one section that says technical proficiency and then list out all the things um, and maybe organize them by the type of thing they are, such as programming language, framework, library, um, you know, um, uh, stuff like that, you know, um, CICD, cloud, um, software tool, yeah. So I, I don't like, especially if you're repeating the same thing in multiple places, right? You have Java here, you have Java here. Um, you have Cucumber twice, Rest Assured twice. Um, I think what you're trying to say is like, these are the tools that were specifically used at this particular job, but you're covering that stuff in the text anyway. So what I think you wanna do is you wanna combine these two sections into one and organize them by the type of thing and put it somewhere, I would say maybe right after your intro here, then I would put technical proficiency, boom. So then right away off the bat, they know whether or not you're a match for their, um, for their role. Um, you wanna, you know, you're saving, you're saving them time um, and you're doing yourself, you know, a, ju a better justice as well because um, now when they, um, when they see that, um, when they see that you have the technologies that they want in the top section, then they're going to be more interested to read. Um, whereas before, um, you have it at the bottom of this section. So let's say they got bored, like right about here. They didn't even see these other things that you did. Right? They didn't see anything about it because they already, they already made up their mind. But if you put this stuff up top in their face, it's like, okay, we're looking for a, a Java guy. It looks like he knows some Java. Uh, let, me, let me read his whole resume. All right. Conducted manual and automated testing for the application. Analyzing requirements and creating test cases. Again, I don't think you need this. Manual GUI testing. I don't think you need this. Um, and the other good thing about removing some of this stuff and reorganizing it is you'll be able to get onto one page. And the rule of thumb that I've heard generally is uh, uh, one page for every 10 years of experience. So you're at five years of experience, so you should really be keeping it to one page anyway. Um, and it's, it's because you're like uh, repeating it, repeating stuff multiple times, right? It's just taking up space, so. Uh, log defects and track them using Jira and Jira X-Ray. That's cool. I would definitely reword this saying that you log defects, you track them to completion, um, you worked with cross-functional teams to uh, drive resolutions, um, like how involved were you like in um, troubleshooting the defects or trying to find the root cause analysis and stuff like that. Develop test plans and strategies based on business requirements. Okay, um, again, kind of, kind of bland. I might want to add a little bit more color to it. Um, designed and executed complex SQL queries for database test cases, ensuring accurate data validation, contributing to the accuracy of critical. Yeah, this is important. This should be top so far. Of all the ones that I read so far, this is more important than all the other stuff. And this one's actually pretty good. Configured Selenium, Maven, and Java for automation scripts. Utilize Cucumber for BDD and TDD. <coughs> Excuse me. This is kind of a nitpick, but um, 
a mentor of mine once told me, don't call them scripts. Scripts are things like, you know, like bash scripts or like, um, um, they're not scripts, they're tests, essentially. Like a script would be like, this is what they're, this is what my mentor said. Take it for what it's worth, right? Um, a test is like you're doing validations, you're doing expected results, and you're checking assertions and stuff like that, right? A script is like you're, the machine is like going to perform some task. Um, so like, yeah, he didn't like the word scripts, but I don't know. I'm, I'm on the fence about it. I'm not, I'm not convinced. Uh, configured Selenium Maven in Java for automation scripts. Utilize Cucumber for BDD and TDD. So tell me more about the TDD. So um, you wrote Selenium scripts first using Cucumber, and then the developer is coded to those tests. Is that, what, is that what you mean by TDD? Or were you talking about unit testing for TDD? Employed Selenium WebDriver API for test automation and Apache POI for Excel data reading. Okay, why did you read data from Excel? What were you doing? Were you using it to validate database stuff? Um, or seed the database? Like what were you doing with this? Successfully integrated BDD and TDD principles using Cucumber resulting in improved collaboration. All right, so this is very similar to the other one. I would probably combine these two somehow. You're talking about Cucumber again. <clears throat> and a lot of people in the industry, they hate Cucumber. I don't even know if it's a, I don't even know if it's a good thing to be honest. It seems like what happens is is people um, they think that using the format given when then is like a magic formula that's going to make their tests better. Um, but really, from my understanding anyway, the the main purpose of using like a BDD um, or cucumber style of given when then is the the communication, the team communication that happens to come up with those, um, you know, those cucumber scenarios or uh, feature files or um, whatever, whatever you want to call them, right? But if you're not having those conversations, like look into like the three amigos uh, ceremony, where you have a, somebody from the product team, somebody from uh, the engineering or a developer, a product person and a tester, right? Doesn't, they don't have to necessarily be those roles, but like those are the parts that, that people have to play. So like I could be a developer, but today I'm playing the product guy, um, you know, depending on the context, the company and stuff like that. But like, yeah, so don't repeat Cucumber all over the place. It's really, um, I would mention it that you've used it, but like I wouldn't kind of, I wouldn't kind of keep doing over and over. I see it again, so. Spearheaded migration of tests to Selenium WebDriver and Cucumber, increasing automation coverage and reducing manual testing efforts. Migration from what to Selenium Web, WebDriver? What did you guys have before? Like UFT, something like that? Like, um, I'm curious what, yeah. What were you on before that? Collaborated with cross-functional teams to identify, document, and reproduce critical defects, leading to enhanced software quality and improve user satisfaction. Okay, yeah, this one's, this one's pretty good. And then again, same thing here with the tools. Combine those two sections. Combine these two sections into one and put it up top. And then um, certifications. Okay, so this looks pretty good. The only thing I would change here is I wouldn't have everything bold. I would only have like the heading. Like certifications probably should be a little bit bigger than certified tester foundation level. If they're the same size, and then. This can be bolded and underlined, but then this should be have no formatting at all. And then this should be bolded and underlined, and then this should have no formatting at all, just to make it look kind of a little nicer. But uh, yeah, that's about it. I mean, it's you, you have some you have some good skills. I think um, I think that you need help a little bit seeing the bigger picture about like what you're actually accomplishing like yeah you're you're doing cool stuff with the technology but like what are the business impacts of that stuff that you're doing right you touched on it in a couple places um 
reducing execution time. That's kind of that's kind of big. That's like good operations, uh, business operations, right? The business is testing, and you made it better. Um, working with cross-functional teams, that's really good. It shows that you're kind of business business focused as well, not just on the technology stuff. So, so think about that. Go through again and like think about like what were the business impacts like. And I would literally ask myself that question for every bullet point. And I would ask myself, so what, right? I would say log defects and track them using JIRA and JIRA X-ray. So what? So that way we kept track of risk and protected the business. Just as an example, I wouldn't actually put that, but ask yourself, so what? And ask, and then, and then kind of the answer to the, so what is the business impact? Okay. But, uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Um, sorry if it was a little bit rough. Um, I, I don't mean anything by it. I just want to give you the honest feedback and hopefully, um, hopefully you can use it and you find it valuable. So, um, good luck to you and let me know if there's anything else I can do to help. All right. Take care. Okay, so I wanted to just add a little bit extra here. I, I wanted to talk about like what you might want to do to kind of round out your experiences. Um, it seems like you have really good experience with automation and you even have some performance testing experience, which is really awesome. A lot of, a lot of uh, quality engineers don't know anything about performance testing at all. And you've used JMeter, which is one of the biggest tools that, that are in the industry, right? Um, but if you were looking to grow your skill set, um, because maybe just having Java and Selenium experience is limiting you, um, I would definitely look at Playwright, TypeScript for automation and for, um, for both UI and for API. And then for performance testing, I would look at either K6 or Artillery. Those are the better tools. I would never use JMeter in my life. If I had a choice, I would never use JMeter again. It's a powerful tool. It's a good tool. Developer engineer experience, way better on those other ones. It's just, it's just an older tool. There's other tools that you can do performance testing with as well, but I've used K6 a lot. Love it. Love K6. Great, great tool. Everything's awesome. All right, um, so that's it. Um, other than that, uh, I didn't see anything related to cloud, except for you have your cloud practitioner. Okay, okay, yes. So that's good. Um, what about you had some Jenkins stuff? I didn't see anything about like pipelines. Like, did you were your tests running in the pipeline, or were they running like on your local machine, or how were the tests being executed? It's important. Were they when whenever the de developers deployed, or did somebody have to tell you, okay, run the tests? Um, if you don't have much experience, I would look at GitHub Actions. You can probably get a framework up and running on your local machine and then have it running on a timer in GitHub Actions. Um, and we have some videos on the channel that kind of show some of that stuff. You might want to check it out. Um, but yeah, that, that's it. Now I'm done for real. <laughs> All right. Take care. Bye.